Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Jones. So today we've got the SHRC H1G inside here. This was sent to me from by Banggood for review, so thank you very much for sending that out to me. And in here we have, I believe this is a 720p version, if you can see on the sticker on the back. So it's 2.4 gig Wi-Fi, I believe, and 720p. Let's see what you get in the box. Does, this is how it comes. It doesn't come in and out of cardboard box. It comes in this case. Quite a nice case, to be honest. And this is what you get in the case. So you get the drone itself, you get the controller, you get four spare propellers and a screwdriver, get the charging cable and the instructions, which I warn you are really really small and even with glasses I struggle to read that but that's by the way. So let's have a look what you get. Let's have a look at the drone first. So it's a folding drone as you can see, the arms fold out, white and black as you see, gloss white, SHRC on the front, folding L's, whatever that means, on the side it has a fixed, uh, sorry it has a camera you can adjust but it's not adjustable by transmitter so you move it before you set off. This doesn't have an SD card, now I don't know if the 1080p version does because I think it will have, but if you look there you can see where the SD card will be and inside there's a little bit of foam to close it off. So this one records directly to your phone, not to the SD card. I don't know if the 1080p version has, but it may well have. So as you can see, it's the size of the drone, it's about the size of a Spark. When opened up, it's very light, weighs under, under 150 grams. It comes with one battery, which I believe is, you can see the battery there, I think it's 7.4. Yeah, 7.4 volts, I believe. Yeah, 7.4 volts, 800 milliamps. Uh, it's supposed to be good for about 15 minutes flight time. The battery just slips in the back here. As you can see, it just goes in and it's got a little tongue here, which holds it in there. And then to get it out, you just press down on that. So it is quite nicely finished off. These nicely lock in place. You can hear, they snapped into place. So, no, no danger of these moving in mid-air like I've seen with some of the cheap, cheaper camera drones. So this has got full GPS. It doesn't have an optical flow sensor. I'd imagine they're going to build a model that has because you can see down there, optical flow sensor. But if you look inside the battery compartment, you'll see there's nothing in there. It's completely empty. So I'd imagine there is some kind of version of this drone or this type of drone that has optical flow. So as you can see, it's got brushed, geared motors all around, and it, it does light up on these. So let's just turn it on so you can see it lit up. So a long press, and then I press the controller. Now as you can see, these are flashing. So you've got flashing lights here, underneath. Now they're going to stay flashing until it gets GPS, so you'd have to do a compass calibration. But if you're not flying it in GPS, if you just fly it, you want to fly it indoors, you can hit the button that's got a little picture of a house. So if you hit that button, now what you'll see is the, the front two lights stay green, the back ones go out, and if you push the button in, you can power it up. If you have that in GPS mode, so all your lights are flashing, and we see it won't actually power up. It'll spin the motors but it won't power up because it's not got a GPS lock. For the compass calibration it's very, it's as simple as this. So you do this to calibrate your compass. Obviously outside, I'll go through that with you in a bit. On the controller you've got take off and land. You've got headless mode. You've got camera video option buttons. You've got a speed button. You have a follow me button. An orbit button and a return to home. So they're the buttons on the controller. The controller takes three AA batteries and it has fake antennas which I just love and it has simple pull down front like they all have to put your mobile phone in. This one opens a lot. Some of these are very difficult to open, this one opens quite easily. So your phone goes in here, uh, it's not my favourite design ever but it does. Okay let's take a look at the app. So we'll just bind it up to the phone so we find the Wi-Fi signal it emits and it is 
Can you see that? H1 GPS. Click on that. Let it lock in. And the app we're going to use is one I've used many times before. It's LWFPV, which seems to be quite a popular app for these GPS drones. Let's start. And there we go. You can see the image quality on your phone. It's not bad at all. You can see how sharp it looks. The bit of lag, but it's not bad at all, to be honest. It's quite good. I'm quite impressed with the lag on there, actually. So, yeah. Very nice screen display. So, at the top of the screen, you can see on the top of the app, you'll see the altitude, distance, etc., speed, your coordinates, and then your roll pitch and your so that's what your craft's doing. You see when I move it up and down. You've got the percentage of battery in the drone, your signal strength. In this side, you've got VR mode. So if I press that, I can have it in virtual reality mode. So if I've got some goggles, I can put it in VR mode. How do I get out of that? There you go. Camera video, and then look at the videos I've already taken. And on this side, I have my waypoints if I wanted to use waypoints. It's obviously not got GPS connected. If I want to fly it with my phone and no controller, return to home. That's locked because the motor's not running. And then again, the motors have to be unlocked. And then I see map. Which works nicely or appears to do. So the app, yeah, you, the app is quite, as I say, this is quite a common app. I've seen it on quite a lot of stuff. So in here you can adjust different things. So you select what mode you want to fly. Now this is purely for flying it on the phone. So you can have mode one, mode two. Take off when GPS signals. Well, if I change that to no, then I can control it that way. Parameters, you would default height of waypoints, etc. You can adjust all them. Map. You can change it to satellite and hybrid, and then other is what your real time view is back in. So I've got 720 coming back to from the drone to here, and then you can inverse your camera if you want us to do such a thing. So, one thing I will say is about this app when I've used it many times before is these parameters will always revolt back to the default. So, if when you go flying, remember you're going to have to move them every time. Every single one I've tried this, and I'm just probably 10th drone I've tried with this app. That's what they do. It's not a bad thing, you just have to remember to do it if you want to use them features. So, that's the app. Like I said, the phone just, let me just show you, the phone fits in here like this. And this is quite, some of these are very difficult to open, and some of them don't open very fine, you have to force your phone, and this one's got actually quite a bit of clearance on it. So, I don't particularly like these transmitters, I'm not going to pretend I do, I don't. So. That's the controller and the drone. So, first impression of the drone is, yeah, it's really nice. I reviewed a JJRC one the other week, small drone, this kind of size. Um, looks very similar to this. That, the 10HP camera, this is quite a bit cheaper than that one. Um, there'll be a link down below in the description if you're interested in buying this from Banggood. And you can see the different variations they've got. So you can buy this in 1080p 5G or 720 2.4 gig, as this one is. So yeah, so what I'll do is, I'm going to leave you, get a flight, and then I'll have in a few days I'll get a flight video footage up, some flight video footage, you'll see it flying, and you'll see me flying it, and let's see how good it is in the air and what the camera actually looks like. I would imagine the camera's going to be very much like they are on these drones. For me, these type of drones are more for people to learn to fly GPS drones. This is never going to be a brilliant camera drone because of the camera being 720 and because they never tend to be on this. It's not got a stabilised gimbal or anything like that. So let's see how well it flies. As you can see it's actually got GPS lock now in here which is uh, bizarre. So it must have got it through the through the roof but that's good. So the GPS obviously does lock nicely. So thanks ever so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and we'll have part two up shortly. Bye bye.